Zurich, 2018. We are living in the era of the Internet of Things. Phone, watches, earplugs, but also many apps like trash can advertising displays. They all communicate wirelessly using radio frequency signals. Predictions are that in 2025, there will be more than 75 billion connected objects. That means three times more than what we have today. The question is, is it really possible to have that many communicating objects with our current technology? At the ETH Zurich, a team of researchers is investigating the potential of new wireless technologies. They explain why the Internet of Things is a challenging future. What is this area, Internet of Things? Well, objects autonomously collect data, so lots of data will be collected, and it's not so clear how they can simultaneously transmit so many data to some data source. Okay, there, there are many limits on, on the number of, of devices you can have, and uh, one limit definitely is bandwidth. So um, you, these devices, they all would like to communicate to each other, or at least transmit the data to a central data server where you process the information. And this is another limitation. If you have many of them, they would like to do this possibly simultaneously, so there would be a crowded space for communication. Radio communication is similar to talking. When I speak, my vocal cords create a sound wave that propagates to the ear. You hear the codes, the information so that you understand what's being said. Multiple people talk at the same time, you receive all the information at once, which makes it much harder to understand what a single person said. A phenomenon called interference. The same thing happened for radio communication. Multiple devices transmit at the same time using the same frequency, they will interfere with each other. The receiver is unlikely to decode the information that will have to be retransmitted. We do not hear radio communications but we can visualize them. On the horizontal axis, we have different frequencies, and on the vertical axis, on the lower part, we have the amplitude of the signal. That means how strong is the signal being currently transmitted. In the top part, we have a time representation of the same thing. The orange part in the middle represents frequencies with low activity. And the lower part are frequencies with higher activities. Have you noticed those waves that seem to wipe through the screen? Well, this was a device trying to connect to Wi-Fi. And see now, the connection is established and data is being transmitted, as can be seen easily with the green bars on the time representation at the top. At a later point in time, a Bluetooth device is also trying to connect, as shown by those peaks clearly visible on the bottom part. On the right side, you can observe that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are completely overlapping. Ultimately, more and more transmitting objects will jam all wireless communications. This is why Professor Thiele's team is looking for alternatives. In the traditional approach, devices don't really pay attention to their environment. If they have a message to send, they will send it. If it fails, they will simply try again. Instead, we are using a technique called synchronous transmissions, where devices are collaborating a bit more with each other in order to facilitate the communication. This is interesting because it almost completely avoids having to retransmit messages due to interference, which is a good news, especially if we are to see more and more connected devices around us. Using synchronous transmission is promising, but there is still work to be done. Like a choir, need a choir master, wireless devices need a communication protocol to organize their transmissions. Romain and his colleagues are designing new protocols based on synchronous transmissions, which doesn't look so easy. The research community is convinced that using synchronous transmission is a good idea. Now, at this stage, we need to refine our solutions and convinced industry to start using this technology in their products. 
it is not yet clear how our technology will evolve to keep up with the challenges of our ever more connected future. Using synchronous transmissions might be a part of the answer. But the most important is, ETH researchers are looking ahead to make sure that we are all ready when the time comes.